Calendars can be confusing. I mean, some months have 30 days, some have 31 days, and let's not even talk about February. Well, once upon a time, an accountant for the British Railway reinvented the annual calendar to have 13 months. And today, we've got the story of why it didn't catch on. The man I'm talking about is Moses B. Cotsworth. For some reason to me, if I had to give a name to a British accountant in the early 1900s, Moses Cotsworth would absolutely be it. I mean, it's perfect. He just seems like he's from an old timey play or something. <laughs> like he's, he's the Scrooge. It's a great name. Around the turn of the 20th century, Cotsworth was running into issues with the calendar. Long story short, he couldn't compare the railway company's revenue from one month to the next and immediately recognize how things were going. It was hard to see if there was a change in actual customers from month to month or if revenue changed because of other variables like differences in days from month to month. That's why Cotsworth designed a new calendar with 13 months of exactly 28 days each. The day of every date was always the same, so the first would always be a Sunday and the 13th would always be a Friday, etc. Cotsworth's 13th month was called Sol for the summer solstice, right between June and July. The leap day was also moved from February to a place at the end of Sol. To round out 365 days, Cotsworth added Year Day after the 28th of December as a global holiday that belonged to no individual month. Sounds great, right? Well, it kind of was. In fact, it was wildly popular with businessmen at the time, including George Eastman, who was the founder of Kodak. In fact, Kodak implemented the 13-month calendar in 1924, and it stayed in place organizing the company's finances and production all the way until 1989. But while businesses liked the predictability, everyday Americans did not. The biggest problem may have been the destruction of Independence Day, also known as the 4th of July. The calendar's approach to holidays was to place them on the Monday closest to their original date to allow for a three-day weekend. When it came to Independence Day, the adopters had two options. They could either keep it in July, but place it on a Monday, which would make it the 2nd of July, or keep it where it was in the year, which would make it the 16th of Seoul. And apparently, Americans were not cool with either option. So the idea eventually died out. But that doesn't make it a bad idea. It just seems that sometimes the fix for a problem is more effort than it's worth. I love that Americans weren't cool with it just because it would make the 4th of July the 2nd of July. I mean, there were other issues, too. Like, your birthday would change, right? Like, all sorts of things would change, and we're, we're very attached to our holidays. That's true. 